we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country sound. We'll all be flying higher than a jet airliner. And if you want a little bang in your yin yang, come along. Well, come on along and welcome aboard the Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Leary coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by Rivals here on this Friday, May 22nd. Man, I cannot believe it is Friday or May 22nd. It's blowing my mind, Todd Leary. Uh, like, wow. Even though we're in this lockdown, it's like time continues to fly. Yeah, I know you said it when we were off the air just a few minutes ago, but I mean, the fact that it's Memorial Day weekend is mind blowing. Yeah, I kept running around and seeing that there's a, 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 a I'm like, holiday, holiday, what ho, what freaking holiday? And I'm like, wow. Yeah, I, I was blown away by it myself. You start seeing the flags, though. But hopefully that helps bring some normalcy because, Todd, also today I just saw the return of recreational sports in Indiana. Kyle Nedenrip from the Indianapolis Star will join us a little later to talk about that. But, wow, I, I didn't even think about that. But, boom, gyms are back. Um, that's got to make a lot of people, a lot of kids happy. Little baseball leagues, AAU leagues, possibly camps. All, that opens up the, uh, the, 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 the the for everything possibly. Possibly is the right word. I mean, I, I you know I think it'll be it'll just be interesting to see how we tiptoe back into things. And um, you know, I, I know I know part of the fact of the gyms being open and that stuff is. Um, you know, it's a, it's a step we've got to get there, but it also doesn't mean, you know, this weekend there would be tons of Memorial day AAU tournaments for basketball and obviously soccer and baseball everywhere, but I, that's still not going to be the case. I mean, we're still not 500. Having, yeah. They, the 500 is just, look, I I've lived in Indianapolis the majority of my life and, and I'm from here. And it's just a special time. I'm not even a race. Like I've been to the race twice. Like I'm it's not, not even, even about a, the race. It's, it's, it's not. It's an event. The whole month is is just something special, and then it culminates this weekend. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just a. Uh, What's that going to be like doing that? Uh, I mean, it's still going to be fun, but at a completely different time because, like you talked about, it is it's a tradition. It opens up the spring and summer. It kind of sends everybody on the way. And now that ain't the deal. And it's like it's going to end the summer, uh, which is a weird deal, but, uh, yeah, we, we all kind of, we all have a little tiny bit of Sheldon Cooper in us where change is just something we don't accept very well. (laughs) And, and look, there's going to be so, I mean, the masters being later, the Kentucky Derby being later, like all of these things, you're like, I don't, I don't, I don't really know how we're going to process it or what it's going to be like. We may love some of it. We may absolutely think it was the silliest decision ever. I like Lasley's going to join us at 920. We're going to talk some IU basketball. Um, Shocker. The the last dance did monster numbers uh, on TV, Todd. I know that's going to be a shock to you, but it was, it's the most watched program on television. Yeah. uh, That, that (laughs) would have been easy to predict that one. Yeah. Given, given what's going on. I mean, we knew Michael Jordan was powerful, but we didn't know he could shut down the whole world just so everybody could watch his documentary. He's more powerful than I thought. All 10 episodes are in the top 13 most watched sports shows uh, of this, of the year, I think. Uh, So of course, when you, you've got, it's a captive audience, it's a captive audience, man. So uh, no shot now. Now go along with that though. There's another documentary coming out that I saw that I just absolutely cannot wait to not watch Tom Brady. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Uh, To me, I'm like, there's like one group of people that cares about him and the rest of the country couldn't give a rat's butt less. Michael but why, Jordan, is, why is that? Why is that the case? Because, because, because the two guys are very parallel. Exactly. For two people from Indiana. Exactly. I mean, they both, they both were kind of the arch nemesis for our professional sports yes. franchises. And, and why is one all of a sudden is it because Michael Jordan is retired and is 20 years later 20 years from now will we be watching the Tom Brady documentary thinking that he's the best of all time or will you that, really celebrate not watching it um that's a good question actually but I, I think part of it is because the, the Jordan era was the pre-social media so we didn't have all the scuttlebutt yeah. and there's all these stories we're finding out and Rodman going to Vegas like what and just the craziness that went on Today, we know a lot more 
deflate gate, you know, all that stuff. I mean, there's some stuff that'll come out, surely, because it would be pointless to do it without that. But there can't be nearly as much new stuff that we don't know about. And you, people just don't love a winner like that for some reason. Most of the time, <laughs> you just can't stand those guys, whether it's Duke, the Patriots. You just hate them. And you hate the people with them. You don't really hate them, but you just – you know how it is with the Nats. I do. you got to hate I, them in your mind. I do, but I – I mean, I'm telling you, I remember we talked about it last week before the final episodes. I mean, the thinking back of that team in 98 with the Bulls, like I wanted them to lose so bad, like I, and and I had zero part in it. Like I was a Pacers fan, but um but I mean, I I didn't have any other reason other than I really wanted the Pacers to beat them. Think about what how that would have ruined the docu series and it just they would have still had five championships and it would have ended and, you know, all of it would have been Jerry Krause's fault and we could have just ridden off into the sunset. But, but like, I didn't want him to win. And, and I definitely have never rooted for Tom Brady to win, but, but I kind of respect him the same oh, way absolutely. I respect Michael Jordan. Absolutely. That I, I think Michael Jordan is more the greatest of all time. I think Michael Jordan might be the best competitor of all time in any sport. That's a and, great – that is – yes. And, and, I mean, Tom Brady is – he's kind of, you know, the magically system. transformed that – that the the quarterback position to where, you know, if it weren't for him, I think everyone would be totally on board with the new athletic Lamar Jackson-type quarterbacks if it weren't for the success of Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. Because yeah, they, can, they, pro- they prove you can still have that prototypical standstill in the pocket quarterback. And uh, yeah, exactly. Will that continue? The, the but I just, like that. Whole, I just rained on your whole parade of having a party to celebrate, not liking Tom Brady. I'd dress up for that party. Like I would love to be there. Like, you I'm can never... dress. Oh no, I don't care. You can dress up all you want. I'm just saying for me, I couldn't care. Although it, I, I say that, but I'm not going to say that I'm not going to sneak and watch it just to get the information. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't have this drive to watch. We can blame I think it on. We can blame it on work. We can say we have to watch it. Exactly. But I don't have, I don't have, I have zero drive to watch. Like we were waiting to watch the last dance the next episodes. I couldn't care. I'm like, yeah, if I see it, I see it. I'll, I'll, I'll find it at some point. Of course, timing is also great. I mean, now that everything's starting to loosen up, um, probably would have been great to release this thing about three weeks ago when everybody no was still kidding. confined, but, uh, oh, well, who, who cares? The NFL is proposing a, a, a weird alternative to the onside kick. Um, which at first I'm like, okay, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. They tried to just implement rules uh, for racial equality to get more uh, minorities in by, by offering to raise your draft pick, which I thought was absolutely ludicrous to change the league like that, which I don't think that's going to happen. But now are the alternative for the onside kick is to give the other team the chance to maintain possession of the ball by going for a fourth and 15 at their own 25 yard line. You could do that two times in a game. Not sure what I think about it, to be honest with you, because when you start the purity of the game and it's like that onside kick, we know it works. We've seen it so many times and it can change a game, but it's um, wow. This it's, it's, it's certainly worth looking at, but uh, it's kind of fresh in IU football fans minds because we saw one work <laughs> that we really didn't want to work, but in the NFL, the percentage of those that are right. actually successful is so small you're right. that you're really not risking anything by taking the fourth and 15. I mean, if you're onside kicking, the game's, you know, you, you need a miracle. And, and a, you know, a fourth and 15 is probably a miracle situation. And so, I, I mean, I can't say – I don't know why anyone wouldn't try it because you, what it's like – a ridiculous oh, yeah. low percentage of a, of recovering oh, yeah. an onside kick. So oh, hell yeah. You know, if you have the option, they're going for it every time. If, um, if the play was a fourth and, and 50 from the 50 yard line, you'd probably still take your chances of accomplishing that than right. an onside kick. It just doesn't in the NFL. Real. You're right. Exactly right. Because the, in the NFL at the professional level, <clears throat> just like everything in basketball, whatever, those guys are so good at doing their job. They don't make those mistakes like you see in college and whatnot. So you're right. The, the percentage is very, very low. This would have I don't, a much higher. I don't know if it would be a 50-50. It would, sure it wouldn't be a 50-50, but it would have a drastically higher success sure. rate. Uh, 
So because maybe, because think of what think of what would factor into that. The fifteen yards would be. I, I would say you would probably gain the first down on as many penalties as you would actually a completing a pass or a play yeah. for 15 yards. So it brings that factor into it, which that's the part of it. I don't really like that. The one, <laughs> the one entertaining fact of it, which is entertaining as it can be. I understand I'm saying that, but it's been pretty interesting to watch all the different ways kickers have invented ways to kick the ball. I mean, some of them have it laying sideways. <laughs> yes. Some of them have it, like sitting on a Coke bottle. I mean, yeah. I, it's just weird how yeah. – like like that's been the entertaining side of watching onside kicks. And my favorite is when they come up and then they, and they swing their kicking foot behind them and they kick the other, at the yeah. – yeah. 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 I was like oh, – I'm like, oh, that was creative, man. <laughs> that was a thinker. Oh, but it, but it is – it's been – you know, I mean, we've all – we all know the way that it was supposed to be practiced where, you know, you set the ball kind of straight up and you kick it so that it takes two bounces and then catches and takes a, takes a big Boom. hop up over the line and somebody's able to run and grab it. And, and then all of a sudden it's transformed into now you got guys laying the ball flat on the ground, kicking it where it's spinning. You got them trying to kick it off of players. Like, I don't know. It, it I think that's more entertaining. <laughs> It's going to be, you know, the more I keep thinking about it, I'm like, okay, I, I think they're going to end up doing it because the onside kick is almost irrelevant, as you pointed out, in the NFL. So I, I bet you they end up doing it, which I think that uh, people will eventually, whether they like it or not, will grow to like it because it's going to increase excitement in the game. Uh, onside kick, like you said, with the, the very low success rate, eh, not much excitement. This is going to kind of rejuvenate the game, not that it needs it. It, it, and and I look at it and I'm like, okay, well, who does this benefit the most? Probably the Bill Belichick's of the world. Probably the people who are the forward thing, who have the best special teams all the time. You anyway, got that right. The guys who figure. So, do we need to give him something else to be better than everybody else at? No. You know what? Don't put yourself in a position to have to onside kick. That's that's the that's the problem solver. You ain't, you ain't lying, man. You need a tea time today, eleven thirty. Some. Uh... <laughs> One just came open is why I'm asking. So, Did it? <laughs> yeah. Did it? Yeah. But uh, we got a lot of fun coming up here today. I think Lasley is going to join us next from the Hoosier.com. We're going to talk some IU basketball recruiting. Kyle Ned and from Indianapolis Star is going to join us a little later. We'll talk uh, opening of recreational sports in the state of Indiana here today. You're listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Coy O'Leary coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Powered by rivals, go to the Hoosier.com. Get signed up for complete coverage of Indiana sports. We're back right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Rain Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. For the best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. 
Call 812-824-1100 to make a tee time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coy O'Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit fda.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. This is former Indiana basketball player Brian Evans, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Coyle. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sullersburg. You need a million-dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Corey O'Leary coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by our rivals. The Hoosier.com gives you complete coverage of Indiana athletics. And Alec Lasley of the Hoosiers with us now. Alec, how are you, brother? Well, good, guys. How are you guys doing? Cannot complain. Cannot complain. Uh, it's Friday, so uh, we're, we're heading that yep. right, boy, right way. Plus, a lot of things opening up today. Uh, Cal Nenrup from the Stars is going to join us later talking about the opening of recreational sports, Alec. People can get out, can shoot. But this is all going to go – a lot of these guys that have been trouble finding gym or rims and all that stuff to get to, not everybody has, but no, that's a worry now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, the best thing for all these players is to obviously get a ball in their hands, continue to shoot, continue to work. Um, I think that's, that's kind of what everyone wants, whether it be the, you know, the, the upperclassmen who want to get back into, into the gyms to, to finish off their careers, or if it's, you know, these, these younger guys that are, that are coming in or trying to make a name for themselves. And we won't uh, – I've seen that uh, Indiana is, is – they're, they're, you can tell things are starting to happen over there. We won't be talking to the players anymore. Those guys are going to be getting to Indiana now probably. They'll, they'll be able to come on up. Uh, Christian Lander can get up here. All those guys, Jordan Geronimo, they can get on campus and start using the facilities. That's going to be gigantic uh, for, our, for all of them, not just basketball, football, the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you, if you just look at it from a – from a basketball perspective, I think this is going to be extremely, extremely beneficial to to obviously Christian Lander, who you know made the announcement that he's going to be joining the 2020 class officially. And I think everyone is a little bit kind of I don't want to say concerned, but the the one kind of knack for him has has been really that uh, that ability to to make that initial impact, reclassifying without really having a full kind of summer in the in the weight room and with a you know Division one program and in, in weight facility that that'll really kind of help him move into that kind of instant impact player that I think a lot of people want from him so I think getting him actually in in involved with with the campus activities with the program is something that that'll be extremely beneficial here you know whenever play actually sort of resumes there's with Indiana basically has an open scholarship right now that I don't think that they're going to use. I think they're going to bank it, uh, especially in light of COVID-19, all this stuff. It's just making it more difficult. So I think they're going to hold that. But what what's going on in the world of the Indiana recruiting right now? Anything moving? Yeah, I mean, there there is a little bit uh, coming up this weekend. Trey Patterson, uh, obviously, a, you know, one of those top 2021 20, guys that Indiana is going after, recruiting pretty hard. Uh, not a huge announcement, but he's announcing his top 10. Uh, I think, you know, Pretty much uh, everyone knows he still has a long ways to go, and that, that kind of shows it by announcing a top 10. Uh, but Indiana should make that and is probably going to be in the mix for, uh, for a long time here. Uh, Villanova is going to be kind of the team to beat, and they've done a really good job obviously keeping those top kids in the Northeast staying close by. But Indiana has definitely done a good job uh, making sure that they're, they're always involved in that recruitment. 
You know, Rutgers has, has been making a push too, and he's from New Jersey, so they'd love to see him stay at home, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. I mean, all these all these northeast schools definitely, like I said, headlined by by kind of Villanova. Uh, obviously, Rutgers is is starting to to make a name for themselves on the recruiting trail. I think they they still might be maybe like another another class away from from really starting to to kind of nail down the uh, the state in New Jersey. But obviously, they've been able to to get a couple of those big time top talents from there and keep them in state. So you know they're they're definitely not a team that you can really overlook. Uh, you know, moving forward. Indiana now with with Christian Lander's uh, official reclassification into the twenty twenty class, Rivals ranks him as the number eleventh class in the country. That's that's big for Archie Indiana, of course, for the talent, but it also for what that says and helping bring that talent in next year. That's going to go a long way. Yeah, and I mean, if if you look at it, you know, the past couple of classes, obviously, if you take out uh, you know Romeo, uh, most of these these classes that he's had since he's been there has been building for this year and next year, you have kind of that, that core group of guys who uh, are going to be there for three, four years now. And they're, they're really starting to, to kind of find their role within the offense, find their role within the defense and, and the system as a whole. And then you add in guys like <clears throat> Trace Jackson Davis, Christian Lander, some of these, you know, five-star type players who, who really kind of elevate that program to the next level. And I think he's, he's been able to do that, but again, it all starts with, those three, four year guys that, that are really the backbone of the program. And as we look towards 2021, of course, we know Trey, Trey Kaufman and, and, and some big targets, but who are the, some of the guys under the radar uh, that, that could sneak in there? Yeah. I mean, one of these guys is uh, Jordan Longino. He, uh, again, from, from kind of the Pennsylvania area, definitely Villanova is on top of him pretty hard. Uh, I do like his game a lot in the way that he would be able to to fit in both on and off the ball. Um, underrated by the sense that he just hasn't been on Indiana's radar uh, nationally, I would say, um, for, for a super long period of time. Uh, he definitely wants to get down to Indiana whenever anything kind of opens up and, and visits are, are allowed. And I think he, he's one of these guys that I would, I would keep tabs on as, you know, as things do slowly kind of open up and uh, maybe visits do happen. Um, as a guy who who Indiana would would love to have and would kind of take that next next step in the uh, in the recruitment with Todd, you you've talked about Longino. You've watched a lot of videos on him. You you seem to really like his game. Yeah, he's a you know he's a bigger kind of combo, either either shooting guard slash small forwardish type player. I mean he's he's kind of a Justin Smith type player, not as athletic, but a much better scorer. And and that's a position that Indiana is going to need really filled and a lot of minutes filled two years from now. I mean, Justin, are any injury or I think he's a 30 minute a game guy. And this is a senior year. That position is going to be wide open. I mean, I think, I think this year is big for the development. I think it's a really, really big year for Jerome Hunter. And, and it doesn't mean he has to have a big year. It needs to means he needs to have a real maturing year where He's a big time contributor and he really looks forward to that next year because I think he could fill Justin Smith's role really well without putting Indiana in a position where they've got to go get, you know, Trey Kaufman and have Trey Kaufman be, you know, I don't want to say forced, but relied upon to come in and have a gigantic freshman year like Trace Jackson Davis did. So I, I think, you know, I think this year coming up, the, the, the one question that I think kind of looms and sits out there, and, and I don't, I've looked at the transfer portal and I've seen, you know, who could fill it, but Alec, you'd be an interesting perspective on it is so, so for this year, because it would be a one-year grad transfer, should Indiana fill that scholarship with a, you know, a flyer on somebody to bring in, or do you disrupt the, you know, kind of the chemistry that this team already has by bringing in a one-year guy? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, normally I would say if you have a scholarship left, obviously, you know, freak injuries happen and you want to make sure you have enough bodies to, to actually fill practice and fill fill the roster and obviously uh, a big guy would would essentially basically kind of put put the cherry on top on Archie Miller's roster right now but kind of with everything going on uh, still not kind of 100% sure when guys are going to be able to get to campus when you're going to be able to really kind of work out with your teams and and go from there I don't necessarily think uh, getting a grad transfer is really a necessity at this point I mean you have your like I said your core group of guys you have 
uh, assuming some of these guys, like you mentioned, Jerome Hunter, uh, even Armand Franklin and, and Trey Jackson Davis kind of make that next step uh, after basically, you know, their full, you know, the first full year uh, in the program uh, and able to actually play. You know, I think that's that's kind of the the core group that you're looking to make that next step to to be able to kind of replace, you know, what what you would be able to get from a from a graduate transfer. And, and then, of course, uh, moving forward, having you talked about visits a minute ago, and it reminds me with, with things opening up now, visits may start to be able to happen, but that's maybe a little bit longer down the road because now you got to talk about air travel, and there's a lot of moving parts that goes along with that, but. Getting kids on campus is something I know that's very, very important to these programs. Yeah, and especially for Indiana. I mean, a lot of these kids who have been able to visit Indiana within the past probably two years, kind of the main takeaway that I've heard and from talking to players, from talking to other people is, uh, you know, their, their strength program and their development. Uh, I think that's one thing that not a lot of other schools are able to kind of showcase. And honestly, it's very difficult to do over – you know, phone calls or, or Zoom meetings or anything like that. Once once these kids are able to actually see kind of where they would be spending the majority of their time uh, and be able to, to actually meet some of those other guys in person, you know, I think that that is where Indiana is going to be able to, you know, wow someone like a, like a Jordan Longino or uh, since we were just talking about uh, Trey Patterson, some of these guys who maybe uh, leans to, to one of these other you know, big schools, uh, you know, a visit can, can change it just like that. And, and I think you'll, you'll start to see that not only with Indiana, but, you know, some of these other, uh, other programs that all they need to do is get a kid on campus. And I think we're, we're going to hopefully start to see that, you know, as the, as the summer approaches and kind of down the line here. Jordan Geronimo nearly committed on the spot. Uh, I think he had to be talked off the ledge a little bit, but he committed the next day. Uh, Regardless, he was ready to go. Todd, you back in your recruiting days, I know it was a little different then, but if you could try to put yourself in today's players' place, the facilities and going around and all that, I mean, I know that stuff is nice, but I would think that in your heart, you kind of have in your head before you even get places, places you kind of already have favorites. Well, you know, one of the things I I think if we said right now, you know, what's the most famous basketball arena in the world? I think we would all say Madison Square Garden and places like that. Like you, you kind of you kind of understand what the meccas of those events, event venues are. And in college basketball, I mean, it used to be Assembly Hall was, you know, it's one of the places a kid would say, oh, my gosh, you know, I've watched games there, you know, since I was a little kid. And it's one of the places that that you, you know, you you've watched on TV, you want to go see, you want to be a part of. And then the atmosphere of games is so great. So that's been the lure for a long time. Nowadays, I mean, and, and you have to give, you know, several of the administrations, but especially Fred Glass and, and Scott Dolson, a ton of credit for the facilities that are at Indiana right now. Uh, I mean, they're not they're not taking a backseat to anyone. And, and I mean, I'm telling you, there are. These guys have four different locker rooms they can go to. It, it's the most incredible place I've ever seen. And when you talk about a kid going and wanting to figure out where he spends time, I mean, heck, I was there after a practice and they had a five-star meal spread out there. <laughs> and it was a normal Tuesday practice. It wasn't anything special. There was no recruits. There was nothing. So it's uh, it, it the facilities are something for Indiana that are a definite positive. And, and you can take uh, – I know if you're from the East Coast or definitely if you're from Pennsylvania, I know you can look at at Villanova's arena and it's got a lot of, you know, history to it and that stuff. But it's it's also old and kind of run down. And the same thing's true at Cameron Order Stadium. Now, they've got great practice facilities and all that stuff. But, you know, Indiana doesn't take a backseat to anybody. So your point, Jim, in getting players to come to campus is a gigantic deal because when they come here, they're they're just wowed by what everything looks like. Uh, text into the show from Tim. What feedback do you think uh, the NBA will give Justin Smith, Alec? I mean, or did they give? Yeah, I, I really, I think this was more so. You know, obviously he he put his name in last year, got whatever feedback that he needed to to kind of work on, and I think we definitely saw him, you know, develop and, and kind of take that next step for him. Uh, I think. You know, personally, he he's not someone who you know I, I really see as a as a fit in the NBA. He he just doesn't have enough of an offensive game, um, and, and definitely with his inability to kind of stretch the floor, you know, if, if he were able to work on that and 
you know, be able to, to connect on, you know, about 35, 34% of his threes even. Uh, that would just make him a lot more appealing uh, as kind of a 3 and D guy with that athleticism that he does have that, that, you know, would be able to translate to the next level. But, yeah, you know, here we are coming up onto a senior year, and he, let's be honest, I mean, it's, it's the same, for the most part, skill set that Justin Smith has had since his freshman year. And, yes, he's developed in places, but I, I think we all know who Justin Smith is going to be. So I, I think this is more so uh, of him kind of, seeing exactly what he can kind of finish off his career on and then transition into whether it be playing overseas or in, in the G league. Cause he obviously yeah, he's going to have that ability to play somewhere. I, I just don't necessarily think uh, his skill set necessarily fits the, the NBA style. I agree. I agree. Uh, hopefully he can, uh, he, have yeah, that. <laughs> but he's got one, he's got one factor that, you know, there's probably only three or four people in the country have, and he's, he's one of the top, most athletic people in all the in the country and the NBA how many times have we seen the NBA turn a player into something we, we never expected them to be and and he's got something you can't teach you can make a player a player but you can't make him an athlete it, it's it's like saying if a guy's seven foot tall you know I, I can't there's nothing I can do to work out and get better and become seven feet tall you can't and, add and seven inches yeah there's <laughs> nothing I can do to become as athletic as Justin Smith there's nothing in the world that I can do to do that so it, it he's got something I, and and everything that you said Alec I agree with completely I think that's probably the feedback that he got is he's got to become more offensive now I don't I don't know that a team would right now would draft him and use a draft pick on him but he will be invited to I think a ton of camps to go to because when they they'll look at his raw ability and think they can turn him around and the NBA is full of guys that have that same MO and background in that they didn't have that great of college careers I mean they're heck who's the guy on Golden State Warriors a few years ago not Draymond Green but the other guy who's a defensive player I cannot think of his name for anything I was trying to look it up but he reminds me a lot of Justin Smith um and and I mean the NBA is full of guys who they've developed into who they are now and they weren't that great in college absolutely yeah I I 100% agree with that I'll say you know the one negative that, that he has going for him at this point is he's going to be a senior um, and you know, he's a lot older. If he were two years younger or even a year younger and he had, you know, he was coming off the season that, that he just had, I think that would be a lot more appealing just because, you know, we see these, these NBA, uh, organizations taking, you know, either late second round flyers or even signing, you know, these free agents that, that go undrafted that are, you know, 20, maybe even, you know, obviously 19, but not, not a lot about 21, 22, 23 years old, which is, you know, what he's coming up on. Uh, because you do lose, you know, right there, two, three years of kind of development uh, at the NBA level. Andre, Andre Iguodala is the guy I was thinking of that oh, he yeah. could, that he could turn into something like that. Because you, you know, think about, this is the way I look at it from that perspective is you take a guy like Carson Cunningham or no, no, was that his name? No, Carson Edwards from Purdue last year, probably the best scorer in the country. I mean, the kid could score and he struggled to catch on, you know, to stay on a roster. And I know he was on Boston and he had some really good games. But the best scorer in the country, in my opinion, kind of struggled to hang on to an NBA team in his first year. And but but Justin Smith is just different. If he went to a team like, you know, that has Steve Kerr or somebody like that or went to a, a San Antonio Spurs or a Boston Celtics, I think Justin Smith with the right attitude could turn into an Andre Iguodala pretty easily. Alec, what, uh, what do you got coming up on the Hoosier dot com this weekend? Yeah, I'm actually uh, taking a look. Obviously, you know, college basketball over the last three to five years has really been dominated by those those programs that have kind of that dual point guard system. Uh, obviously, something that Indiana hasn't had since Jordan Holes and, and Yogi, and obviously that that program and that team back then uh, uh, was was very good and one of the top in college basketball. So, kind of looking at you know the the development that 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 offense can have this year with uh, Finnessy and Lander, uh, kind of. Doing, it, doing their thing together in the backcourt. Make sure you go to the Hoosier.com, get signed up for complete coverage of the Indiana Hoosiers. Alec Lassie does an incredible job there keeping you apprised on uh, basketball, and we've got football and everything else. Alec, thanks a lot, brother. I hope you have a great weekend. Actually, right, right. a great holiday weekend. Happy yeah. holiday weekend. Yeah, I appreciate it. My birthday is actually on Monday, so I'll be uh, hopefully the weather will be nice enough to, to get out there and do some stuff. Together, everyone.
Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy, birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, brother. Appreciate you joining us. Have a great birthday holiday weekend. Alec Lasley from the Hoosier.com joining us here on Indiana Sports Beat. Coming up next, Kyle Nedrup's going to join us back with more right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit fda.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. Hey, this is Jordan Halls, former Indiana Hoosier. Keep up with Indiana Sports on Indiana Sports Beat. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Leary coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by Rivals. The Hoosier.com is the complete coverage of uh, Indiana Hoosiers athletics. Man, Eagle Point Golf Course is going to be absolutely smothered, covered, and uh, just slammed today, Todd Leary. Most golf courses uh, in the areas where it's not raining are going to be that way. I mean, the temperature is absolutely perfect out right now for some early morning golf. It's going to be great all day, so. It's going to probably going to be a big weekend of golf for a lot of people. Well, it's going to be big for uh, Tiger, Phil, uh, Tom Brady, and Peyton Manning because that's the big uh, the big deal this weekend. They've been doing all the trash talking and uh, all that stuff, but that ought to be kind. Of, it ought, this ought to be kind of entertaining, I think. You know, it will be. Um, it, it's always. You remember back a long time ago, back in the day when they used to have the. I think it was called like the wide world of sports or something where they would have athletes from one sport doing things in other sports and things yep. like, like it'll be interesting to see. 
I mean, I've seen Peyton Manning play golf before. I've never seen Tom Brady play golf. I mean, it'd just be interesting to see how they, you know, how they play and how they do. And well, I mean, we know it's from, not, from it's not bad when your partner you can rely on is right. one of the best couple players ever to play. Uh, we've seen from you know the Jordan deal that the competitiveness of these guys that they they play for big money. They like to compete, and it doesn't matter what it is. So uh, they play the for course, big money in our world. In their yeah, well, yeah. Worlds, it's it's not that big of a money. Lunch but, money, lunch money. Yeah, it is. But yeah. but I mean, you know, the the here would have been. This is what I wanted to see him do is do a, you know, a, whatever it would be two sport two sport competition and play play golf for one thing and then do some football skills challenges for something else or get two basketball players and play two on two in basketball. I mean, that would be, that'd be more interesting, but I think, I think the guys, uh, athletic insurance companies would probably lose their mind. I think that you're probably right. Hey, remember that story of the NFL cornerbacks that were both charged with felony robbery, armed robbery, yep. all that. Yeah. Bonnie and Clyde, exactly. Well, now DeAndre Baker is suing Quentin Dunbar's attorney. Those are the two guys for libel. That's that. All right, okay, perfect. Well, let's we'll get to that story later. Kyle Nedenrip from the Indianapolis Star has joined us. Kyle, brother, we appreciate you joining us, especially on a day where things are opening back up. What a great day. How are you? Hey, doing good, Jim. Thanks. Todd Leary is with us here as well. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice day. We've been, we've been hoping to get to this point. But it, it seems like it kind of caught a little of us off guard and by surprise. But, man, it's a welcome sight to see people be able to get out a little more freely as they are. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a, it's a start anyway. It's a, it's a start to, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, things go well and, and everybody continues to, to be smart and, and you know, stay safe and if you're sick stay home and and uh you know the the obviously the the measures are in place for for that and and hopefully people are abiding by distancing and things like that and you know that's the biggest thing is to to you know get to a point where we can kind of get back to you know some sense of normalcy and i think it's a start anyway i mean today you can you know baseball teams or you know some of the non-contact sports can can get to you know practice a little bit you know i don't know how much of that will will happen today necessarily but probably by next week there'll be more of it um you know going on so you know, it's, it's a start anyway and i hope coaches out there and, and uh you know administrators from these programs are uh, being smart about it and, and sticking to the guidelines and then you know about by, by june 14th or 15th i can't remember which day it is specifically but then we'll be back to uh you know doing some some more meets and tournaments and, and, uh, and games and things like that. And, and, uh, you know, and, and again, it's not going to be back to normal. <laughs> you know, I don't think nothing will look, look exactly normal, but, but I think that's okay. And I think we, we have to live with that and, um, you know, just continue to be smart about what we're doing to, to make sure we, you know, keep these, keep the kids, uh, uh, as much, uh, not at risk as we possibly can. And, and uh, you know, that'll take a lot of, a lot of work for everybody. Yeah. It's not just, it opens up so many things, Kyle. I mean, we, we talk about the camps cause you know, Jordan Hulls is a good friend of ours all the time. You know, he has these camps, but that's been, you know, in limbo, AAU summer season, player visits to, to schools, uh, recruits and all that type of thing. Literally all that opens up a whole lot of possibilities, but those visits that's big for these schools. You know, you, you cover recruiting somewhat too, you know, all these high school kids out there, how important these summer visits are. Yeah, and everything has changed with that. I mean, it's not, you know, starting to, uh, I was working on a, a story about that, and, and especially for these 2021 kids who, you know, they, they aren't getting a chance to be seen and may, and may not, you know, it's it's just, uh, you know, that, that's, that's too bad for them, and, and, you know, we don't know, you know, because I'm always curious in the spring and April and, and you know, when those open weekends happen to kind of see, you know, all right, there's a, there's a kid who we didn't know he could do that. Or, you know, kind of a, you know, kind of allows you to see kids play against really good competition and, and get a sense of a, a kid who is a sleeper who we maybe haven't seen during high school and, and a coach sees him in a, in a big event and all of a sudden his recruiting completely changes. But, you know, we're not going to have that probably until, you know, I've been hearing that, that possibly a couple weekends could open up in August uh, for, for, uh, recruiting, but, uh, but again, that's, you know, that's down the road and, and, you know, I don't know what's going to happen exactly, uh, 
uh, as far as that goes. But it does. It, it creates a whole lot of the recruiting landscape is completely different. And you know, I think for the twenty, you know, twenty twenty two class and down, you're still there's still plenty of time, and, and I don't think it's as urgent. But for that class that's going to be seniors right now. Um, you know, some of those guys who could who could bump up or, or girls, you know, bump up to a Division I uh, scholarship offer or go from mid-major to high-major uh, aren't really getting those opportunities to prove what they can do. And, and you know, who knows what could have happened or, or what may happen down the road. But it does it does change things for a lot of, a lot of kids who are in that position. And, Kyle, another thing I thought about, Indiana, I think this it means a lot more to the state than, than some other places because during the summer, Indianapolis and the surrounding areas are just full of visiting teams, whether we're talking soccer, baseball. It, it, it is a, just a, it's a gigantic business uh, for the state of Indiana teams coming in here and all these kids. So uh, I, I know that obviously is not going to be the same. I don't know if they can get any of that in, but it, that's a huge thing for the state. Well, yeah, and there's two layers, you know, there, well, more more than that even, but there's there's definitely the business side of, of youth sports and, and travel sports and then the high school uh, side. And, and, you know, they're, it's sort of a – it's interesting because, you know, you, you've got the chance for, you know, travel sports basically can start opening now, you know, with with, uh, with pretty strict limitations. And even basketball is, is – under the under the governor's orders, considered a you know he, I think he he changed that from what he's what was out there on Wednesday compared to yesterday, and that created some uh, questions from basketball you know travel coaches saying you know because it, it was they were supposed to uh, be able to start practice tomorrow or today and uh, and under the order it actually had basketball as a contact sport so you you, you can still do drills and, and and those sorts of things conditioning and. and you know, you could certainly still have practices that are, um, you know, non non contact as it is, but uh, but not, you know, until June fourteenth, they're not supposed to be doing basketball full out scrimmages and practices and things like that. But regardless of that, I think there is a competing. Um, you know, high school coaches feel like you know we we can't see our kids until July first because of the rule against uh, getting into schools and facilities. Why are these? You know, I've heard from some high school coaches. You know, why are why are we not able to do anything? And 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 you know, travel coaches are. And and so there's that competing uh, entity, I think, to some extent. But you know, as you guys know, youth sports and travel sports is, is big business. And, and if if you say you can open things up, you know, they're going to open things up. And it's under restrictions. I think there's a lot of good people out there, and 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 well meeting people out there who who run. Uh, travel sports and, and run these businesses too. And I don't think it's just a total money grab, you know, to be, to be fair to them, but you know, it's their business. So they're going to, they're going to do what they can to, to, to make, you know, make their, make their living. And, you know, and I, I know, you know, Grand Park's going to be opening, um, you know, to tournaments as soon as they can, which is that, that June 14th timeline. So, I don't know if it'll go back to, you know, they're going to have to, to be able to limit the number of fans at, at, you know, the baseball complex up there and the, you know, the soccer and things like that. So you may not have the total number of fans, but, you know, to me, baseball is a little bit easier. You're outside, you can spread things out. You know, the kids on the field are kind of naturally socially distanced anyway. Uh, those sorts of things seem doable to me. Uh, basketball from a, from a, you know, it's, I, I don't know, you know, it's not a socially distancing uh, sport. So, you know, that raises a, that raises some, some concerns. And also, you know, what happens if, if somebody tests positive who, who's on your team, you know, to me, that's the big, that's the big question in all of this and, and not just high school and travel sports, but any level, you know, college football, you know, whatever, you know, what happens if the, the linebacker from uh, Penn State test positive that you know, do you shut the whole thing down again or, or what happens, you know, and, and I don't know, we've seen a lot of answers on that front just yet. So that's, to me, that's still the big, uh, big question mark out there. Yeah, you mentioned football there because we've talked so much about basketball and other sports, but football is the, the sport coming to us. And as we approach summer, uh, whether it's a high school level, especially, you know, they, these guys got to start practicing. And you just touched on a whole bunch of things that, that these schools have to cover. Uh, testing, I mean, uh, we've seen how much trouble it's getting people tested. You know, they're, they're getting up to that, just the general public. And now uh, all these kids will probably have to be tested. There's going to be all these protocols that have to be put in place. 
But there's no doubt this season is coming, uh, regardless, unless something drastic changes. Well, yeah, and, and what's doable, you know, what's uh, the NF, NFHS put out some guidelines this week as far as, you know, things to put in place or things to think about, some questions to ask. And some of the guidelines on there, you know, reading through there, they just they don't even seem realistic. And, and, and not that, you know, those guidelines are, are mandates. Those are, They're not. But if you're trying to return to football or, or lifting weights and, you know, it, and you, you, you can't uh, – you can't even have a spotter, you know, or things like that. I mean, it's just, it seems, you know, in the, in the cleaning stuff and the, you know, testing, not necessarily testing, but taking temperatures every single day. And, you know, it's just, it's a lot, you know, and, and especially I know these, a lot of these high school football staffs or uh, whatever sport, they're not, you know, <laughs> they only have so much time, you know, and you're putting a lot of uh, responsibility on those athletic programs that are in a lot of cases fairly bare bones, as it is, so I think we have to come up with something that's uh, that's doable and and also safe. And I think you know that that therein lies the uh, the issue. And, and you know, I just I hope that you know people are realistic. Um, you know, when it comes to that, because you know these athletic directors and coaches, they already have a ton on their plate. You know, so to add that element, uh, they're going to need some help. You know, and, and depending what those guidelines end up being, I just I hope that people are. Uh, understanding that that's a, it's going to be everybody's going to have to pitch in is, is what I would say. Cal Nedrib, you hit the nail on the head, man. Make sure you go to the Indianapolis Star. If you're not a subscriber, become one. I am. So uh, keep uh, keep that journalism flowing. You do a great – nobody does a better job covering Indiana high school sports than Cal does. Uh, Cal, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you. Make sure you go read his article. It's out now uh, on the opening of recreational sports. It's going to be big. Appreciate you, man. I hope you have a great holiday weekend. Hey, you too. Thanks a lot, Jim, and, uh, and take care. Have a good one. Town Ned Rep joining us from the Indianapolis Star. Uh, appreciate him very much. Uh, opening up of recreational sports. Hopefully, uh, the operation is summer. Todd Leary, I hope uh, it's it's a great weekend. Uh, but uh, we we just got to get there, man. Slowly and surely wins the race, right? Yeah, I mean, we, we you know we can't. Because today is the opening day, I mean, I, I think he, he expressed it right on the money. Is It doesn't mean all of a sudden there's going to be tons of tournaments this weekend. I think this weekend is, is the opportunity for guys to start. And when you think about practices, even take baseball, for example. I mean, you know, you, they can do individual work. They can do skills work and things like that. It's not going to be – I mean, baseball is a little bit easier. But even basketball. A guy like Jordan Holes is, is fully capable of training kids and, and – you know, training multiple kids now. It doesn't just have to be, you know, a one-on-one situation. And this is the first step. Like we, I know we all, you know, we're we're Americans and we're f- from Indiana. When it comes to oh, basketball, God. we want we want to ju- we want to jump the gun and be ready to go. <laughs> but you know, it, it, we this is something we all. I mean, patience is one of the most difficult things for us all, to, or definitely for me, to accomplish. And um. You know, it's, this is one of those situations where we all have to just work hard to, to be as patient as possible. Yeah, I mean, I, you talk about Jordan. Jordan, is he has been out training, but that's in, in lieu of the camps that he was expecting right. to be having. But this, and it's not just Jordan, it's, it's, it's Brody Boyd or whoever else is doing this stuff out there, these guys. Now they have a chance, and it's not just these guys. It's the kids that have been sitting home. The parents are like, thank God yeah. these kids are going to get out of the house. I mean, no I, doubt. They're, you know, I, I mean, one, of, one of the things I was I was just shaking my head when when Kyle was talking because everything he said makes an enormous amount of sense and and it you know it, it seems to be the way that it should be but but one of the things he said was was using common sense and you know I, I'm not I'm not saying this to be negative I'm a parent and I know how I am with my kids and, and I know I've been to a lot of AAU tournaments and there's a lot of things that go on that are not common sense and. And, you know, everyone is going to have to uh, when, when people are protective of their kids. I mean, it's a protection level that, that goes to another, you know, another level. And and is this is just one of those scenarios. We're all going to have to let it kind of play out and open slowly and and all exercise as much patience as possible, because this is a situation that's not fair for so many people. It's not going to be fair. I just noticed you got the haircut but didn't shave. Uh, kind of fun. We got more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat. Make sure you stay with us. We're back to the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by Rivals, right after this. Hey, 
Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. This is James Blackman Jr., former Indiana Hoosier. Make sure you're keeping up with the Hoosiers on Indiana Sports Beat. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Larry coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Powered by rivals. Go to thehoosier.com to get signed up for complete coverage of uh, Indiana Athletics. Tim at the text line, are there going to be uh, high school or college kids overweight from being at home and not in school, Jim? Nah, I don't think so. I not high lost, school. Not high school. Weight. But there'll be some uh, high school kids' parents overweight. Yeah. From right, you got that right. Not working out. The high school kids can't gain weight. Uh, Ryan uh, said, I'm with you. Uh, not rooting for Brady. He's a rarity up there in Ann Arbor. Uh, but, yeah, that's – he's a – because Tom Brady is a Michigan man. Not a fan of – not too many people are. Larry in Bloomington is excited to see IU athletes back on campus. He's pumped. I'm with him. Me too. So I'm sure a lot of people are pumped. Uh, yeah, and more than no, but nobody more so than the coaches. Yeah, because you know, coach, nobody is chomping at the bit like a coach. They know they every minute. Forget day. Every minute that goes by that they're not doing something, and it doesn't even matter if somebody else is or is not doing something. If they're not doing something, it drives them insane because they feel that they they have to have this and this to implement this and this. I mean, you know how it is. It's It, it drives them nuts. Can you yeah, imagine I mean, Bob Knight during this time as a coach? <laughs> uh, you know what? He, he would – he probably wouldn't miss a beat. He would be – he would be hunting and fishing and doing all the stuff that he normally did in the summertime 
<laughs> now, all of our trainers, Tim Garl and everybody else working us out, uh, yeah, those guys would be going nuts. Because, you know, everybody develops a plan. I mean, here's the thing. The, coach, the head coach is responsible for the overall program. And so in doing so, he hires a trainer. And, you know, Cliff Marshall for IU is an insanely important aspect of the program. So, so the, the trainer in Mr. Marshall, he creates his own plan for each one, not just for the whole team and what they all need to accomplish, but for each player individually. And then every time there's a recruit, you know, he's, he's analyzing everything about this recruit. It's a, it's a new day. It's not like it used to be where, you know, they just hand you a Susta cow and tell you to drink a milkshake that has 25,000 calories in it every morning. I mean, these guys, these guys have a dedicated plan for each player and, that's what they've not been able to, you know, to start working on and get get in the process of. And Cliff Marshall will be, I mean, he'll have these guys in there going a million miles an hour before we know it. Started talking about this earlier. We, we uh, had to, got with Kyle, but the, the two NFL guys, DeAndre Baker, he's suing Quentin Dunbar's attorney now for libel because the other guy's attorney put out a picture of two guys with their faces blocked and then put. Baker's name in it, uh, but didn't say it was him, but kind of tried to intimate. And it's like, what are you doing? He's like, that's not me. Why, how can you? So now they're, it's like, this is just nuts how this thing has gone crazy. I mean, and the NFL has got a lot of guys to deal with. It, it's not just them. You got Cody Latimer and there's other stuff going on during this crazy time. This, this is absolutely insane here. Hey, hey, dude, they need this thing to go away as fast as possible. And putting your name in the in the newspaper even more to sue an attorney, it, none of that's going to end up being good. So <laughs> <laughs> just try to get it to go away as fast as possible, buddy. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, happy anniversary, Dickie V and Lorraine, his wife. It's their 49th anniversary today. Mike Roberts, it's his birthday, assistant coach for men's basketball. And Nick Sheridan, the offensive coordinator for Indiana football, his birthday today. So lots of stuff going on, man. That's a, that's a big weekend. That's a big celebrity weekend. But, I mean, I think he'd be the first one to say it. But is anyone a bigger saint in the world than Dickie V's wife? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, me? She goes up there. She's up there. I mean, you can put up with that level of enthusiasm on a daily basis. Whew. She's a special, special human. I bet she has a way to just tamp that down. She probably got one thing. She's going to. Eh. She's got that look. She probably got that look. It's either that look. Dickie that V, snap, it's time something. to shut it down. Yep. 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 Time yep. to shut it down, Dickie V. Yeah, they usually do. And they all can also usually see through right through you. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a matter. I bet she just calls him Dick. You, probably so, <laughs> especially at certain occasions. Uh, you use that however you want. You matter than that another. Yeah, you <laughs> you, that, that's a, it's that you, nobody would probably have more fun than that name than than Bob Knight would. Um, the, the different layers of how you can use at things. Uh, yeah. Do we want to play that clip? No. The different ways you can use use yeah, certain probably, words. Probably better hold that one for another day. <laughs> Hold that for the PM show after ten o'clock show. Did I? Uh, did we talk about Felix Lopez? I know that we did earlier. Felipe Lopez. Felipe, rather Felipe. I no, don't know why no, you did not. Um, I saw it on Twitter. Somebody, and I'd forgotten about this, but this is it was in regards to Trey Patterson posting his top ten schools, top ten, which, which I think is an absolute joke. And we've already talked about that. Give me a break. the The coolest thing about the the the, the kids that are going to Indiana right now, whether it's Galloway or Leo or Geronimo or or, or even Christian Lander, all of them. Well, oh, hey, going to Indiana. Just going yeah. in. I'm going to Indiana. That was it. I mean, I mean, here, here's, I, I don't want to say it doesn't make any sense because I think here's where, here's where I guess you can make sense of that. If he put out a top 10 list and he wrote a summary as to why each one of those top 10 is in his t top 10 list, then I could say he's used He's go. He's being due diligent and going through the entire process and analyzing everything. But if you're, I would love to ask you, whoever puts out a top 10 list. Okay. Tell me why this school, because I bet the answer is, Oh, you know, they just have a big history or they win a lot, or I met the coach, you know, whatever. Like that to me is, is ridiculous. Like you if, know, if, good you, man, well, if you can't schools, narrow it down to, to three, I mean, I'll even, I'll even let you expand it to five. If you can't narrow it down to five schools, then you truly have no idea where you're going to go. 
I was just going to say, you know, good and damn well, at least five of those schools have no shot, none no way. that you no are way. not going there. And it's why I don't, I don't even see the point. Is it just to get that added love from those other five, five it, schools? Yeah. Uh, okay. I shouldn't say that because I don't know, but I can't come up with another reason, another First reason thing. why that would be the case. I'm and waiting that, for one of these kids to narrow it down to his top 100. And, and I got to tell you, that makes you think, is that the kind of kid that I want? 100%. Is, is that 100%. a team player or is he thinking about themselves the whole But way? But on the flip side of it, like, look, let's say, let's say there's an opportunity that this could be the other side of it because – if he and his parents or whomever his mentor his counselor is at school, if they are being due diligent and they are analyzing all, if they've said, Hey, this is my top, this is the only top 10 schools I would go to. And I have to do my due diligence on each one of them. I can understand that process, but to say, Hey, here I've been offered by, you know, everybody and their brother and here's the top 10. And, you know, I've had three conversations with one of these schools and that's it. That's that's a joke. You're you're just seeking the attention. There's no way in hell after all this time it's down to ten. I mean, 10. who 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 gets down to ten? It's like, come on, man. Uh, it's re- it'd be an interesting it'd be an interesting game to say. And and you know what? Yeah, like your your point in this would be to make a high school kid look bad, which is not make any sense at all. But I mean, I'd love to sit there and say, okay, name the coaches from each one of those top ten schools. Each one of those schools you named, name name the coaches and their assistants right now. And and I have a feeling that that answer would not come out. But well. it is, and part of it is society. You know, they they get encouraged to do this stuff because when you do that and you get a thousand likes, that's encouraging you to do that. So and and they're seventeen year old kids. They're immature. They're supposed to do immature stuff. But but, it, but think about this. And, and, and I, I, I'm saying this as a positive. I, I think this is something that they have to keep in mind today. You mentioned social media and you mentioned the new world of the way these things are done. And look at the, the ranking system that's done right now is, is putting these guys in a position to be offered big time money and big time opportunities to go play in that G league team next year. So I can understand you marketing yourself like, like what he's doing right now. I mean, the Jalen Green and the Isaiah Todd from this year, I mean, those guys had an opportunity to to go do something that not very many players have that ability to go do. And so I don't blame these guys for for all of the marketing efforts and what they're doing. Now, I think a lot of it's silly, and if they really are going to go to college, then then none, then some narrowing it down to your top 10 or your top 100 doesn't make any sense. But – I also get that you have to continue to market yourself. Yeah, I, I think uh, when I was – someone had mentioned it, and I think I remember this. I started off talking about Felipe Lopez, that way back in the day, he was like one of the first or early on to cut his list to five, and Indiana was one of those. And Bob Knight said, you ain't coming here. Yeah, and I can I, see I think, that. I think I, – I could be wrong on the year, but I think he was my same year, 1989, graduating from high school. And I think he was the number one rated player in the country. Now, I could be wrong a year or so. Off of that, I may just remember the story really well, but but I know he was a guy that uh, he was he was the number one rated player in the country. Like he was, there was no issue about it. He played on a team out of New York. I mean, he was everybody wanted to be like him, and, and you know, it just it didn't work out. I know at that time they talked about how he would easily, you know, he was Michael Jordan ish. He was that good, and and you know, he just there's a thirty for thirty on him. That's an interesting watch, and he went back to his home homeland and did a lot of good things back there so it just gets me laughing can you, can you see a kid cutting a, a list uh for bob knight yeah right yeah i got your list uh i, I remember the and, michael and, lewis stories and, and your stories of recruiting like, you want to come to indiana all right boom that's it <laughs> well you know you know either to his either to coach nice defense or just to explain the situation like you know that's why i think coach shashevsky was kind of able to adapt better because I don't think he started out as a guy who would be okay with someone narrowing it down to their top five or 10 either, but he's kind of had to, and he's kind of had to put himself in that game. And I don't think coach Knight was willing to do that. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying he's right. Or, and I'm definitely not saying he's wrong for being that way because I understand it. And if you, if you don't know Indiana's where you want to go, then it's not for you. And, and he said that to me in no uncertain terms. I mean, I told you the story. I, I, I was supposed to visit Purdue 
the day there two days after I was talking to him on my on my offer. And I said, hey, uh, I'm supposed to visit Purdue. You know, what what should I do about that? And he had the most simple answer you could ever give. And he didn't even have to reply to it. He said, if I have to answer that question, you're coming to the wrong place. He didn't have to say another word. End of story. It was that simple. I chickened out and had my had my parents call. <laughs> fact. That's a fact. You talk about you talk about weaseling out of a situation that you regret later in life. That was a that was a high school kid decision right there. He wanted two things. He wanted a kid that was decisive and committed. And you committed need to Indiana. Team. I mean, that's team. why it, it's it's cliche in today's world to think about it. But I think it's kind of cliche because Coach Knight, I don't know if he invented it or started it, but he definitely lived it. And we didn't have our names on the back of our jerseys because he did not want anything other than IU on your shirt, on Indiana on your shirt. And that's it. And you knew who you were playing for. You knew what it was about. If there would have ever been a kid, like this is the thing I see all the time and it makes me cringe, is, you know, when you see like a guy in the NFL score a touchdown or whatever, and he does that thing where he points at his his name on the back of his jersey and stuff like that. I mean – I can't even imagine what would happen to that human the next day in practice. Like it, it would be if there was if there was smartphones that you could videotape. Whew, I was gonna say ask Jadlo. I'm sure he knows. Man, it would even be worse. <laughs> I think it would. I think it would be worse because the, here's here's the here's what would be bad about doing that is unless you were a senior, you would hear about it for the rest of your career. You would hear about, I mean, you, the only thing you could be lucky enough is to be a senior and you only had to hear about it for one year because otherwise you would, uh, you, every negative thing, every turnover you ever made, every bad foul, every bad decision you ever made, it would get brought up. It is a Memorial Day weekend. I hope everybody goes, and it's going to, and the weather it's gonna, is going, it's going to be Memorial. Uh, it's Memorial year. It's yeah. It's <laughs> going to be a crazy one, but it's, the weather is going to be absolutely awesome. What do you, think, be what do you think the lake's going to be like this weekend? <laughs> Oh my gosh! Can you imagine? It's gonna be like uh, what, what was? Uh, it's gonna be what was that movie with all Caddyshack when all those boats are out there and he's got his new you boat. Had, you've had two Caddyshack references. I know this it's week. it's per, it's only one I can think of with a bunch of boats in the water right now. But <laughs> when when he was driving his boat, he ran over it. But uh, it's gonna be that craziness out there like that, man. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. The good good weather. People are getting out and about a little bit. I, I went and, and stopped by a uh, Culver's yesterday, and uh, like I said, it was going. Well, Scotty had me a nice chocolate milkshake. He mentioned he you didn't get the root. Beer, you didn't call ahead and get the root beer milkshake. I wasn't going to make him do all the stuff after John told us all the stuff they have to go through, taking the front <laughs> off the machine and all that. I'm like, nah, I'm going to pass on that. But uh, I got all the other stuff, man. That, ooh, it was good. That double burger, spicy chicken, and that thing was good. But uh, it's really good. But the funny thing is, I got there right at straight up noon, and I'm like, oh man, this is going to suck. Boom. It was right through that thing. Man. Like, I know. This is nuts time. Are you crazy? You I had awesome. to be 15 cars deep uh, uh, last week one day when I went in there. And I'm telling you, I was out there in five minutes. It was crazy. Hey, I hope you guys get out to Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, which I could get down there today. Uh, enjoy it down there, man. Looking forward to that. Of course, uh, the e- Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, they're, 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 the uh, pub is open. We were uh, on the deck last night after playing some golf there. So that's all. Had pizza, and I got to tell you, it was pretty damn good. Uh, it was awesome. So Eagle Point is open now. Get out and about, man. Uh, just I know we're – don't go crazy, but – just be cautious and go out because that's all I'm still doing it. I still got, I carry my mask with, with me all the time. Uh, it's just a new normal right now. I'm, I'm fine with it. Whatever, you know, <laughs> uh, you and normal do not go in the same. Well, thing. that's true. Yeah, we know I mean, that <laughs> you ain't lying there. That's true, man. I'm looking forward to having a great weekend. I hope you have fun. I know you're going to be hitting the golf course at some time because the weather is, you know, it tremendous. I uh, hope uh, Jessica has a great weekend as well. You guys, uh, Jimmy, thanks a lot for a great week, and I hope everybody, for uh, thanks a lot for joining us. Cal Nedenrip from the Indy Star, Alec Lasley as well. Make sure you go to thehoosier.com. Until Monday, man, I go out and have a fun one. I'm Jim Coyle. I'll see you on the radio.